From Sean Connery to the Italian Stallion, stick around to find out what Hollywood's finest think of their breakthrough roles. Welcome to The Briefcase. could hate James Bond. Every woman wants him and every man wants to be him. That is unless you are Sean Connery. Yes, he's the first and the most famous Bond, but apparently he wasn't a fan of the role. Bond. James Bond. Saying, I have always hated that damned James Bond, I'd like to kill him. Reluctant to sign up for more than one movie, the producers had to keep throwing more money at him. He quit after the fifth, making way for George Lazenby, returned and quit again after the seventh instalment. He thought the super spy had become a parody. So he decided to take on this red number in Zardoz, much more inspirational. Zardoz, Zardoz speaks to you, his chosen ones. The gun is good. The gun is good! Go forth and kill. Another guy who wanted his character killed off was Harrison Ford. We're not talking about Indiana Jones, no, he loved that guy. We're referring to the lovable scoundrel Han Solo. Didn't we just leave this party? Thinking it would be heroic and supply some emotional bottom, he implored George Lucas to kill the iconic character. The closest he got was being shipped off in Carbonite in The Empire Strikes Back. Lucas wanted him to be there for the final film in the original trilogy, Return of the Jedi. As a character, Ford didn't find Han so interesting. Whilst happy to be involved in the project, he wasn't impressed with his character's lines, saying, George, you sure as hell can type this shit, but you can't say it. Not that Ford didn't have some sort of say, the whole I love you, I know exchange between Han and Leia was Ford's suggestion. The original script was I love you too. Ugh. Ford was also concerned about being typecast by the end of the third flick. He'd already released Indiana Jones and Blade Runner. He never talked much about Star Wars and admits Han Solo was very good for his career, but the idea of returning for the role years later had always been out of the question. Lucky for everybody now, his character is central to the new Star Wars film, The Force Awakens. Chewie, we're home. Thanks to a streetcar named Desire, Marlon Brando became the defining actor of his generation. Jumping back decades before the other two heartthrobs, Brando's character Stanley Kowalski had the cinema so heated that slushies were invented. I'm not even kidding, the flick was 51 and slurpees were around by the late 50s. Brando had the talent to somehow make an arrogant and hot-tempered prick a sex icon. This, however, was never his intention. In fact, the idea of being a sex symbol made him sick and he couldn't stand the character. Why don't you women go after you and says? How much longer is this game going to continue? Till we get ready to quit. You should call it quits after one more oh, hand. Uh, hey, that's sir. my cold! <laughs> Poor guy took on the role for the original stage version and came back for the movie thinking they'll get it this time. Oh sure we got it, here's an Oscar nomination for being a jerk and status as screen legend because we hate the character so much. Hey Stella! Team Edward may be disappointed to know where Robert Pattinson stands on the character that made him a household name. Did your Twilight experience turn out to be what you expected? Despite playing Cedric Diggory in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, it was Twilight's Edward Cullen that truly launched his career. From wizard to vampire, Rob's contempt with his character is beyond hilarious. Even in 2008, the year Twilight was released, he told Empire Magazine that Edward Cullen is the most ridiculous person who's so amazing at everything. He went on to say that so many actors tried to play on that aspect, whereas the more Rob read, the more he hated him, thus portraying him as a manic depressive who hates himself. He even pointed out the fact that he's a 108 year old virgin and clearly he has issues. He's like, like, what am I doing with this <laughs> kid? I'm 108 years old. Fancy having to put on that mask not just for one, but for four movies, and then have your on and off screen chick cheat on you with Jacob and a future director. But the real trick was simply to look slightly constipated and stoned. It's kind of a mixture of looking like slightly constipated and stoned. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's just quite easy to achieve. Sylvester Stallone deserves all the success he gained from Rocky. Despite producers loving his story idea, they didn't want him to star in the film. So dirt poor at the time, Stallone stuck to his guns, kept the rights, and look who's laughing now. 
So unlike the others we've chatted about, Stallone clearly loves his breakthrough character. But the reason I bring it up is his first headline role that he has tried so hard to keep under wraps. He plays the character Stud in a softcore porn film where a couple hosts an orgy called the Party at Kitty and Studs. Now this is a character Stallone ain't proud of. In his defense, he hated the script and initially turned it down. But at the time, he was desperate for any kind of work, sleeping in a bus station between roles. I've also heard it's not very graphic, like at all. After he became big time in Hollywood, they renamed it Italian Stallion. Story goes, Stallone tried to buy it and prevent it from reappearing, but failed. I guess it's all a matter of perspective. It's hard to know when a role you're doing for a paycheck will turn out to be a smash hit. Thanks for tuning in to The Briefcase. I'm Amy Jobson and I'll see you next time.